Okay, hopefully those settings are alright. Set to change the exposure. It's a little bit dark in here compared to the gym. But uh, what's good guys, I figured I'd do a little bit of a like clip before I get into my training session and just kind of walk you through a couple of changes that have um, that have recently come about while I prepare my, um, my EAAs for the session. So uh, yeah, basically uh, this week, uh, once I got my check-in response back from my coach, uh, the plan of attack now is to go into a, like a holding phase, a maintenance phase. So uh, basically, um, calories have been pulled back to, to about maintenance slash small deficit. So about 5,000 calories a day now. Um, 345 protein, uh, 800 carb and 50 fat. And yeah, that's what I'll be hitting basically for the next uh, four to five weeks. Uh, it might potentially get changed. Like if I start dropping weight uh, quite quickly, it might get bumped back up. Uh, but if I maintain weight, it'll just be kept basically where it is. And the plan of action is to hold my new uh, high, all time high body weight of 120 kilo. And uh, yeah, basically establish that as my new body weight set point before we go into the next push-up phase in about five weeks' time. Uh, supplements have been pulled back down too, uh, so just running like a, basically like a replacement kind of cruise dose, and um, yeah, that'll be in uh, implementation for the next five weeks, and then from there it'll basically be, uh, yeah, uh, three, two, one, take off again. So start my next course then, and uh, the goal will be I mean, it's a similar rate of weight gain, 0.5% uh, body weight per week, but, um, but yeah, uh, the new body weight target, I mean, there's not really a target, but I would like to try to hit 125, 130 kilo by the end of the next push up. So yeah, that's the, uh, the plan moving forward. But I got back in uh, biceps today. I was meant to do that yesterday. So today is actually Wednesday. Uh, but there's been some pretty heavy raining and flooding recently. The uh, wet season's been dragging out a little bit longer than it usually lasts here in Thailand. So I've missed a couple of days of training over the past week uh, due to that, that heavy rainfall. So it's kind of messed with my training flow a little bit. I've had to move a couple of sessions, kind of like a day forward sort of thing. But um, yeah, still getting it done. Uh, I had a rest day yesterday, obviously a forced rest day. So. Um, chest, shoulder, tricep and calves on Monday. It was meant to be back in biceps yesterday on Tuesday, but it was a rest day, so today I'll be back in biceps. Then I'll do my usual Wednesday session tomorrow on Thursday, which was obviously meant to be today, which is my uh, leg session. So yeah, um, volume's been pulled back a little bit too in this maintenance period. Uh, so I'm not doing as much volume. The idea is to resensitize my body to uh, training stimulus. So just pulling back on the um, volume down to like a kind of like maintenance slash minimum effective volume territory instead of uh, maximum adaptive, maximum recoverable volume territory. And then yeah, uh, that'll allow my body to essentially become a little bit more responsive and receptive to the actual training stimuli itself. And then when I go back to those higher volumes, uh, my body will just be a little bit uh, more, I suppose, responsive. That's probably the, the best way or the only way I can describe it. So yeah. Um, Training today will be a little bit quicker because of that reason, so a few less working sets here and there. And yeah, I'll, I'll record everything for you though, as usual. I'm supposed to be trying to leave a couple reps in the tank too, but I just know I can't do that, so I'm just gonna train to the same effort I normally do, but just with less volume. And that'll still be sufficient at allowing my body to have some super compensation recovery take place and, and still kind of like yield some benefit from this uh, maintenance phase where we're pulling back on the volume. Also, if you are ever looking to buy EAAs or BCAAs, do not buy this brand. It tastes like absolute dog shit. It's um, mutant. Uh, if you if you want to like physically like assault your taste buds, definitely buy it. But yeah, this is a blue raspberry flavor. It tastes like like that cough medicine that your grandma forces you to drink when you're a kid. So yeah, don't, don't buy it. Um, I'm only using it because it's all I have and beggars can't be choosers, so yeah. But I've got some uh, Optimum Nutrition, great flavored EAAs on the way, so when they arrive, that'll be better. But I'll have this uh, intra, and I'm just gonna have this uh, Red Bull pre-workout. I've already had one, so this is more so just to help kick in kind of like midway through the session. 
um, because I, I do have ADHD, like my tolerance to caffeine is really high. I can have a thousand milligrams of caffeine a day and still go to bed with no issues. Um, so yeah, I mean, I drink a lot of caffeine. I wouldn't recommend you doing the same. Uh, everyone's tolerance is different. We metabolize it differently at varying rates and we have different thresholds that we can tolerate. Mine just happens to be incredibly high. Um, so yeah, I, I can drink a shitload of caffeine and not really have any, any problems. But yeah, I'll smash this and I'll see you there in the, in the gym. Okay, so first movement of the session, it's pullovers just to stretch the lats out, get some blood flow in there and obviously to start the session off nice and, nice and productively. Um, and I've mentioned this in the past, like past back bicep training sessions. Like I always like to start my back training with either like a vertical pull, like a pull down, a pull up or a pull over. I don't like to start it with a row. I just find I don't get as good of a, a kind of like full back activation unless I do that. So so yeah, that's basically the, uh, the plan of action. Uh, I'm going up a little bit heavier than I was using last week, but aiming for the lower end of the rep range and I've got one less set today. So instead of four, I'm doing three sets of pullovers. I mean, I kind of covered like before at the front of the gym, the like phase that I'm entering in terms of my training and my nutrition, the whole holding phase, but I figured I'd explain a little bit about like what the purpose of that is. So basically, basically uh, when you um, when you're a big push up phase, like you're pushing the calories, you're, you're pushing your training hard, the volume, the intensity, all that's getting higher and, and closer to like redlining. Your body's accumulating a lot of fatigue along with that stimulus it's receiving. And I don't want to compare the human body to a car because that would be a really unfair comparison. Like a car is very crude, like in, in relation to the human body. But the human body being a biological, multicellular organism is a lot more sophisticated than a mechanical uh, vehicle like a, a um, but similar things apply like if you flog a car you don't service a car you don't have periods where you just back off on the accelerator shit starts to go wrong uh, so that's the purpose of this like maintenance phase or this holding phase I don't necessarily need it for the health reasons like my blood work my markers they're all impeccable in fact actually better than they were um, prior to my last contest prep when I was basically on nothing but um, that's beside the point. It's still a good idea to kind of take your foot off the pedal sometimes and just not coast a bit, just go a little bit slower and then put your foot back down on the throttle after you've had like four to six weeks of just taking things a little bit easier. So that's basically the, the uh, idea behind this period that, I'll, that I'm in or this phase that I'm just starting. Um, now, volume wise, like, I mean, I'm just pulling the volume back a little bit. I'm not pulling it back excessively because I still want to stimulate the muscle. I still want to be growing in this period. I just don't want to be like pushing things to the extreme, if you know what I mean. Oh. 
Another thing I wanted to touch on too is like when you're in a push-up phase, something else that can also happen. Like I suppose other less uh, common signs of fatigue or that you might need to back off for a little while is like digestion going to shit, sleep going to shit, uh, energy levels, motivation, that sort of thing. All these similar kind of like key markers that you'd notice kind of be impacted in say like a, a normal training phase where you need a deload week. Similar thing happens in like a push-up phase. Um, so, yeah, you'll notice that say, you just wake up feeling a little bit more tired in general. You might notice that you eat your meals and it just feels like it's sitting in the stomach a little bit longer or you might not be as hungry. Uh, you might start getting some like acid reflux or GERD, which can have a number of underlying causes or reasons why it's happening, but one of those could just be an accumulation of uh, training-related fatigue, um, which will obviously be mitigated and resolved by having either a, a deload period or like a, a holding phase where you have an extended period at like a, a more of a maintenance volume for training. Food is around maintenance or in a small deficit to help promote an aid in better digestion, a restoration of that appetite and just the overall general like ratio of ghrelin to leptin. So better ghrelin signaling that sort of thing. Because um, all of that is impacted over a longer period of time when you are aggressively like titrating and pushing the food and the training volume. Uh, so yeah, it's worth considering, worth keeping in mind if you are noticing you're hitting a bit of a plateau in a growing phase, it might be advantageous and productive to even just pull back a little bit for a while. I think you were just taking one step back in order to take three steps forward. So you're never going backwards, you're just momentarily stepping back in order to be able to give yourself more runway to go forward. Because if you don't, if you don't back off when your body is fatigued and it needs that time you'll either injure yourself or your body will just force you to back off by just reducing your output that much that you have no choice other than to essentially just perform at a lower level and it's better to do that willingly and by choice as opposed to letting the body do it because usually if the body has to do that for you you're too far gone it's going to take a lot longer to recover and bounce back from that <sighs> a little bit of a change up from the usual uh, vertical pull that I do. This isn't quite a full vertical pull but um, it's halfway between like a traditional row horizontal pull and a vertical pull. Um, and it's actually the movement that I want to put in the next training block so that's the reason I'm doing it instead of the hammer strength vertical row that I usually do. Um, I'm getting a feel for it in this week, this first week of the maintenance block because volume's lower and hypothetically speaking efforts meant to be lower too even though I struggle to hold myself back um, but doing a different movement even if you don't go 
say to one or two reps from reserve, say you go completely to failure with the new movement, your ability to maximally exert and fatigue yourself isn't going to be as great as a movement that you're already well um, versed in and familiar with. So if you do, like, say the first week of new block when you're doing new exercises, even if you go to one or zero reps in reserve, it's actually probably not going to be like a true one or zero reps in reserve. It's probably going to be more like a two rep in reserve by the time you actually learn the movement pattern of, over those first couple of weeks. So that's my rationale behind it. I'll go ham on these all out, but I uh, only got uh, three sets instead of the usual four. And, um, and yeah, it'll be basically uh, getting a good contraction and, and familiarizing myself with the movement. a little bit too light. Might lean back a little bit too just to get more of a stretch at the, the end. Otherwise, I bottom out the plates if I'm too upright, so. Mm. 
On the rose. Again, this is a slightly different variation of the row that I was already doing in my program. Um, the hammer strength low row, obviously that's the one I was doing. This one's not quite as low and it allows the, uh, the handles to articulate so your wrists can naturally move the way that they want to move. So starting in more of like a neutral or like a um, parallel position at the, the start or the stretch of the rep and finishing in a bit of a supinated position if you want to really get that lat and the bicep into it a little bit more. So that's what I'll be aiming to do. I've got two sets only though, uh, instead of the usual three. And uh, then it's onto the rear dots and the biceps to, to finish off. <laughs> Going a little bit lighter too, because I don't know, I've never used this machine, I don't know how heavy one, two, three, four plates feels. So as soon as I was doing five on the low row, I figured three is a good starting point. <clears throat> Back here doing the uh, the back supported face pulls, I guess you could call them. I don't think I can ever go back to doing face pulls the conventional way ever again, like after switching to, to this style, this method. And I, obviously I have one guy to thank for that, Sam Sewer. Um, it's just been, it's been great. Like I, I actually feel like a fucking idiot for not thinking of this prior to, to seeing him do it. So uh, yeah, uh, the kids, kids switched on, I can, I can say that much. But yeah, I'm gonna do three sets of this. I've already done one set. So there's two more to go of uh, 20 to 25 reps. We got 31.8 kilo in here, so smash that out and uh, then it'll be on to biceps, then home time. Mm. 
Three sets of this today instead of four, um, which is fun and nice. Not because I don't enjoy training, but I've got a pretty busy day. So the fact that I'm going to be finishing my session a little bit quicker than usual, it, it's kind of, I suppose, something that I'm actually looking forward to. Uh, if I didn't have as much work to get through today, though, I definitely uh, would be itching to do more sets. But yeah, with work taking uh, front seat, uh, I'm, I'm kind of grateful for the shorter session today. But yeah, uh, rep match sets so I'm going up a little bit from what I did last week instead of 30 kilo aside I'm doing 35 and I'm just aiming for 12 reps um, the bottom end of the rep range and yeah so uh, let's do it It was a touch too low. And also, if you guys are wondering what that like red mark is on my right bicep, that's a ingrown hair gone bad. <laughs> or ingrown hair gone rogue, I suppose you would say. Um, turned into a, a bit of an infected um, pimple, I guess you could say. And uh, it's just, yeah, really inflamed. Yeah, it looks horrible. Kind of looks like uh, leprosy or something, I think. <laughs> but yeah. Um, I get ingrown hairs really easy, always have, uh, it's just one of the pitfalls of my genetics I suppose, and uh, any supplementation you take is going to obviously amplify that, so yeah, uh, but it'll be sorted in due time, uh, yeah, time for set number two. Same weight as uh, last week. Just uh, aiming for a good contraction, match the reps I got, or thereabout.
Mm-hmm. <laughs> 